everyone, in this video I'm going to review and apply for you five new sunscreens that have launched on the market for 2022. Um, some of them are chemical, some of them are physical sunscreens, some of them are tinted, some of them are not. A uh, whole spectrum will be covered in this video. I will show you how they look on the skin after application. I will give you thoughts on how they wear throughout the day, uh, how makeup applies over them, etc. So if you are interested in what I think about uh, whether these are good or not stay tuned thank you so much for subscribing to the channel you can also follow over on instagram if you missed the last video i will link that in the upper right hand corner for you please go check it out um, on my face i am wearing one or two of the new blushes from benefit i have java on my cheeks also in the crease of the eye really lightly um, for a little very subtle highlight i put peach in on the cheekbones also, I have swatched and applied all of the shades that are currently available in that new collection. So if you are interested in that, then make sure you go check that video out too. Necklace will be linked in the description box also. It's very affordable if you are interested. Okay, so here are the five new sunscreens that I am going to review for you. And I have been wearing and testing out all of these. Um, so I'll go one by one. As I'm reviewing these, I will show you footage of me applying it to one side of my face and I'll show you immediately what it looks like after application. And then the next shot will be what it looks like after I've given it five to 10 minutes to dry down on the skin. Let's go in order of increasing SPF. Um, so the lowest that I have is SPF 30, and honestly, that's the lowest I encourage you to apply. That's sort of if you have a casual day at home, maybe you're going out for a really quick errand, uh, but if you're gonna spend any sort of significant time in the car or outside, um, no matter what the weather is, I would encourage you to go between 40 and 50 instead. But let's start with something that I mentioned in the most recent uh, new beauty video. This is First Aid Beauty's Mineral Sunscreen. Uh, it's a SPF of 30. This is the box it would come in. And this has 20% zinc oxide. So this is a mineral sunscreen. Now it does not have a tint to it. I really like the packaging. It is a squeeze tube with a pump dispenser. Dispenses very easily. You can purchase the sunscreen at Sephora or Ulta. It retails for $28 for 1.7 fluid ounces. Because it's not tinted, this does have the faintest white cast. Now remember, of course, I have light skin. I'm about an NC20, although now in the summertime when I'm a little more tan, closer to NC25 and MAC shades. The bottom line is I have light skin. So on my skin, it's, I would say, practically speaking, not noticeable. There's no noticeable white tint once it's rubbed into the skin and has set. The texture is very fluid. It uh, glides across the skin and spreads very nicely and easily without too much working it into the skin. And thankfully, this has no drying alcohols. It also has no fragrance. So overall, I really have enjoyed using this sunscreen for my more casual days, not long days out. Um, and it does wear nicely under makeup. I don't feel like it affects my makeup. I don't feel like it pills or makes my makeup uneven looking. Um, it is not the most mattifying, but it's also not shiny or greasy. So it's a very in-between sort of finish, natural finish on the skin. Next up, let's talk about Indie Lee's new mineral sunscreen with an SPF of 30. You can purchase this on their website or on Beautylish. It retails for $42 and you get 3.3 three fluid ounces. So more expensive than the Fab um, sunscreen, but pretty much twice as much product. This is also 20% zinc oxide and has no tint. But unlike the First Aid Beauty one, this has a much thicker cream consistency that takes more work and pressure to spread across the skin and to get an even layer. Um, it definitely leaves a noticeable white cast. It feels heavier and stickier on the skin. Um, so this is not a sunscreen that I have enjoyed putting on the face. I have pretty much, other than testing it on the face to see what it's like, I have subsequently only really used this on the body 
even on the body, I feel like it gives you that kind of sweaty feeling and doesn't feel the most elegant. So um, I wouldn't recommend this, especially since it's more expensive, it's harder to find, leaves a noticeable white cast and just doesn't feel really great on the skin. So I couldn't say that I recommend you using this one. They do say this is their first ever sun product, sun care product, so maybe they can try to improve the formulation in the future to be a little more elegant on the skin. Next up, the new sunscreen from Tula Skincare. I purchased mine through Amazon, but you can also find this at Sephora. You can also purchase this at Ulta. It retails for $36 and you get 1.7 fluid ounces. The name of the product is the Protect and Glow Daily Sunscreen screen gel. So SPF of 30. Now I don't think I've ever experienced a sunscreen like this. It is truly a gel formulation. It goes on completely clear on the skin. The ingredients are chemical sunscreen based ingredients. So you get avobenzone, homosalate, and octosalate. So I'm not surprised that there is no white cast because it is a chemical sunscreen, but the gel consistency really is what is unique about this. It glides across the skin. It is not heavy, sticky, oily, thick. It feels beautiful on the skin. It's lovely to wear. It works nicely under makeup and it's just very seamless on the skin. So I am pleasantly surprised by this formulation. On top of that, there are really nice skincare ingredients. For example, you get Camellia sinensis leaf extract. You get some lactic acid. I do notice a high number of ingredients that are fruit extracts, which can be great for the skin as uh, ant antioxidants, but you get some things like the orange peel extract, citrus limo lemon extract, um, that can sometimes get into the territory of being potentially irritating. Um, I'm not super concerned about that, but overall I'm very impressed by this formulation. I think it's at a decent price point and I really have enjoyed using this. Next up is by Ilia. This is the C Beyond Triple Serum SPF of 40. Now this retails for $64. You can purchase it through Sephora and also Amazon and you get one fluid ounce. So noticeably more expensive. It comes in a nice pump dispenser, although you do need to shake the product and I have noticed that you need to keep it inverted and facing down while you dispense the product. Otherwise you don't get the product out of the bottle. This also comes in three shades. So the shade that I am wearing and use is tone one. They say this is for extra light to light medium skin tones. Tone two they say is for medium to medium deep skin tones and tone three is for deep to extra deep skin tones. Now what's interesting about this product is that it also says it has 10% vitamin C and niacinamide, which is fantastic. And more importantly, the vitamin C is L-ascorbic acid instead of some other less studied form of vitamin C, which is again, great. Niacinamide is 2% and the product contains 10% non-nano zinc oxide. So again, a mineral sunscreen. You also in the product get squalane, some jojoba seed oil, and truly this feels beautiful on the skin. Even though it does have a more serum consistency, it's very thin and watery, it does not feel heavy at all on the skin. In this video, this is the sunscreen that I'm wearing underneath my makeup. It pairs very nicely with makeup, doesn't make it pill or affect the consistency of the makeup. It spreads very easily and smoothly across the skin. And on my skin, this is completely invisible. The tint that they've added to it is fantastic to absolutely meld it into your skin tone and leaving no cast. I do want to say I just noticed in looking up the price point for this and the ingredients that on Sephora there are a lot of negative reviews saying that this pills really badly on the skin, which shocks me because in using this, I have never experienced that. Um, and so just to tell you, I applied this, I waited for maybe five, 10 minutes, and then I applied a liquid foundation. This, this time happened to be Rimmel London's Match Perfect foundation. Um, and I put, you know, translucent powder on top of that. I applied powder blush and hopefully you can see I, I had zero issues with it moving or being patchy or peeling at all. So, and I also did my skincare underneath. So 
I just want to give you a heads up that, you know, obviously I can only convey to you my personal experience that I've never had that issue. Beware, there are a good number of other people saying that it pills so badly, other people saying it works beautifully. So that is an unfortunate experience that a decent number of people are having. Um, so just be aware of that. It is quite expensive. I think that it's a beautiful formulation, but it, for $65 for just one ounce of product, it does have great skincare ingredients, but that is, I think, um, too much. <laughs> Even for a fantastic sunscreen, you can get something like the Dermatology uh, sunscreen that has a higher SPF, that also blends beautifully into the skin, that is not that prohibitively expensive, maybe a third of the cost of this, and you get, I believe, much more product. So the price point, I think, is the major negative of this product, not the formulation, at least in my experience. And last up is a new sunscreen from Murad. This is the Environmental Shield line. It's the Correct and Protect Serum Broad Spectrum SPF of 45 and a PA++++. This is going to be 17% zinc oxide, so once again, a mineral sunscreen. It comes in a glass bottle with a dropper dispenser. I'm not sure that I would say it's the most convenient, but I haven't had any issues with it. It's not messy or anything. This costs $69 and you get how much? One fluid ounce of product. So again, really expensive. The formulation does contain things like jojoba seed oil, some shea butter, also a little bit of niacinamide, squalane. There seems to be a little bit of ascorbic acid in here, so some vitamin C in here also. So good skincare ingredients. The texture and consistency is very watery. Again, quite serum-like, similar to the Ilia one, but this does not have any sort of tint. Um, I don't notice any sort of real white cast, maybe very slightly. It does have a slightly more serum-y finish to it, so maybe just a tad bit of added shine, but it's not greasy, it's not heavy, it's very actually thin uh, feeling, but perhaps maybe a little bit more of a feeling of a layer being there because of that more serum-y nature of the formulation and consistency. It does dry down a little bit so that it's a little less shiny once you let it set for a while but at the end of the day it gives you a little bit of shine because of that serum quality and again I didn't notice it having any sort of effect on the makeup that I applied over it. Once again similar to the Ilia one the biggest negative um, is the cost. I just don't think it's worth given the amount you get that price point. If you were choosing head-to-head -head between Ilia and the Murad one assuming you didn't have problems with pilling on the Ilia one, I would definitely choose the Ilia one just because it feels even more elegant on the skin and blends just absolutely seamlessly into the skin. But at the end of the day, these are really expensive. So ultimately, at the full conclusion of testing all of these, I think my personal pick would be the one from Tula if I had to pick from just these five. And interestingly, it is the chemical, <laughs> only chemical sunscreen, um, which explains why it has no sort of tint to it, but it's just so elegant on the skin and such a pleasure to use and wear. So ultimately, I think that is the winner of the five. Not that I think you can really go wrong with any of these, except for I would not recommend the Adili one. So let me know your thoughts if there are any brand new sunscreens that have just launched on the market that you also want me to put head to head and review for you, please put them in the comments section below. I would be happy to do that. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I appreciate your time. I'll see you in the next video.